क्वेश्चन नंबर वन दिस इज गेट कंप्यूटर साइंस 2012 क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन प्रोपोजिशन लॉजिक आर्ग्यूमेंट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन प्रोपोजिशन लॉजिक आर्ग्यूमेंट इन आवर कोर्स सो यू टेल मी रिमेंबर दिस इज अ लॉजिकल इन्फ्रेंस सो दिस इज अर्ग्यूमेंट क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द एर्ग्यूमेंट फ्रॉम द प्रोपोजिशन लॉजिक एर्ग्यूमेंट सो आर्ग्यूमेंट इज गिवन टू यू इन दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट वी डू कैन एनी टेल मी वॉट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप वेन एवर सम एर्ग्यूमेंट इज गिवन टू यू इन द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट इज गिवन टू यू वॉट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप वॉट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप वेन एवर यू आर सॉल्विंग एनी क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू आर्ग्यूमेंट सो दिस इज अ प्रोपोजिशन लॉजिक एर्ग्यूमेंट यू कैन नोटिस ओके argument in proposition logic so you tell me what is the first step when you solve the question related to argument first you will convert this into propositional logic yes or no this is argument form you will convert this into argument form okay do you remember we discussed this argument form what is argument form so first of all what you will do you will convert this uh, argument into argument form so what we do here this is what we do it rains it rains let's call it r okay it rains let uh, this this proposition it rains this proposition let me denote by variable r so this is a propositional variable which represents this proposition the cricket match will not be played okay cricket match will not be played let me write it not p okay cricket match will not be played so let me write it not because this is not okay so i am writing in negation of p so automatically means this is p right automatically this this is b and this is conclusion inference means conclusion so the conclusion is negation r okay the conclusion if you see the conclusion is negation r so finally your argument form what is that argument form is r is given uh, what is given to you if r then negation p this is given to you okay this is pre this premise is given to you the second premise that is given to you is p okay and the conclusion that is given to you you can notice the conclusion the conclusion that is given to you that is negation r okay so this is your first of all what you do this is your this is called argument form right yes or no this is called argument form what you do this english statement is given to you this argument is given to you in the english language you convert this into propositional logic so what we are doing i told you that we are converting Uh, we are we are uh, we are writing this proposition using proposition variable r we are writing this proposition using propositional variable p so this proposition will become negation p and this proposition will become negation r so finally this argument form you will get now so let's solve this question now what is the best way to solve this question tell me whenever you have a argument related question what is the best way i told you the best way make the conclusion false and then you try to make all the premises true these are called the premises okay so you can notice these are called premises these are called premises or you can call them hypothesis or you can call them antecedent antecedents okay so remember what is the best way the best way the best way to solve the questions related to arguments that is the best way is what you do make conclusion false so what you do this conclusion you make it false so let's make it false then what will happen if you make it false tell me if you make it false then what it means if you make it false then what it means it means r is true right okay so now conclusion we have created conclusion as false so this con this is the conclusion we made it false it means r will be true now you try to make all the premises true what you do remember and now now you have to try to make all the premises true can you make all the premises true tell me if i can make all the premises true then what will be the answer the argument will be valid or not if i can make all the premises true conclusion is false conclusion is false if i can make all the premises true then the argument is invalid okay very good so what i can do at this point you can see that let's make it uh, let's make it true so let me make it true very easy p i am making it p true now you can notice r is true you can notice r is already true r is true and you can notice this negation p p is true so negation p will be false true implies false what is that true implies false what is that so true implies false this true implies false this is a false okay true implies false is false so you can see that can can i make all the premises true after making conclusion false 
this is the conclusion false after making this false can i make all the premises true i cannot make all the premises true so remember i cannot cannot make all premises true i cannot make all premises true after making conclusion false after making conclusion false after making this conclusion false you cannot make the premises true and what this means this means that this is a valid argument okay it simply means remember the answer will be what so the answer will be because of this i can say this is a valid argument this argument is valid so finally i can say that this i1 this is definitely correct okay i1 is a correct inference so this i1 this is a correct argument let's see the i2 let me solve the i2 so tell me what will be the answer for i2 you can notice it did not rain let's denote by negation r it did not rain negation r the cricket match was played let's call it p okay then you can notice it rains it is it is r the cricket match will not be played the cricket match will not be played this is your negation p so what is the argument form you got what is the argument form you got tell me what is the argument form that you got you got that if it rains means r implies negation p okay if it rains then cricket match will not be played r implies negation p now it did not rain it means negation r and finally this uh, the cricket match was played so this is your p so tell me now again the same thing you will do this is your conclusion your conclusion is p so again the same thing we will do let's make it false now after making it false can you make all of them true let's try to make all of them true so how to make it true if i want to make it true then r will be false agree if i want to make it true then r will be false now you can notice r will be false r will be false false implies anything false implies anything remember false implies anything false implies anything whatever so false implies anything is it true so you can notice that this is also true so this is also true and remember this this is also true so you can see that this is this complete thing this is also true so after making conclusion false all the premises are true okay so all the premises like premise p1 premise p2 premise p3 and so on all the premises these are true and the conclusion is false what it means tell me all of them are true all of them are true and the conclusion is false what that means what that means that means that this argument okay this argument is invalid so that means this argument invalid okay so this argument is that definitely invalid or i can say that this inference is invalid okay remember or i can say this inference p1 p2 and so on pn this inference is invalid okay this is called inference this is the symbol for inference this is the symbol for inference i can say this inference is invalid okay this inference is invalid inference this is the symbol for inference right yes or no so this is the idea so you can see that in this situation i can say i2 is not correct inference i1 is correct so the answer will be option b is this clear answer is option b very simple question so all you have to do just convert every argument into argument form this is given in english language you convert this into propositional expression okay so very easily you can solve the question the best way remember whenever some prop, whenever some argument is given to you this is the argument that is given to you and this is the conclusion the best way to check uh, if you want to check validity if this is what you want to check if you want to check validity then all you have to do just make this false this is your step number 1 this is the step number 1 and then the step number 2 this is the step number 2 to make all of them true okay make this true make this true make this true try okay try to make all of them true is this clear so very simple that all of them you try to make true try to make try to make true if you can remember if you can so this is your step number 2 try to make true this is your step number 2 now if you can okay step number 3 what is step number 3 if you can then invalid if you can then i can say your argument is invalid argument okay very simple so this is your answer i hope this point is clear anyone want to tell me the look at this statement number 
okay look at look at this is valid right yes or no this is a valid inference this we have already seen that this is a valid inference this inference is valid or i can say this is a valid argument what format this argument has this this is the format that r implies negation p okay the cricket match was played so it did not rain can anyone tell me this is a rule of inference which rule of inference is this this is a rule of inference what is the name of rule of inference remember this is a valid argument and this is a popular rule of inference this is a valid argument okay and what it what it is called what it is called so the this is a rule of inference i told you this is a this is a rule of inference what is the name of rule of inference this is a rule of inference and the name is modus tollens okay the name the name of this is a modus tollens what is modus tollens remember there are two there are two rule of inference one is modus tollens one is modus ponens what is modus ponens modus ponens that is i can say positive see if you want to if you want to remember it you can under, understand like this p means positive side okay p means positive side p means positive side what it means it means that it's like this p implies q if p happens can i say q will happen p implies q if p happens can i say q will happen tell me p implies q if p happens can i say q will happen yes so remember this is a positive side right yes or no so this is called modus ponens this rule of inference this rule of inference is your modus ponens and what is modus tollens that is a, that is contra positive the contra positive side of this that is called modus tollens modus tollens so what is modus tollens tell me modus tollens that is contra positive basically the contra positive of modus ponens i can say this is basically you can you can call like this this is i can say this is contra positive contra positive of modus ponens what it means it means that if p implies q if q does not happen then p does not happen yes or no is this clear q implies uh, okay so you can notice this is a q uh, p implies q if q does not happen then p does not happen okay you can easily see that this is a contra positive uh, uh, this is a contra positive of modus ponens because uh, this is modus tollens and if i make like this this is modus ponens okay if i do like this if i do like this is this called what is this called tell me what is this called this is modus ponens is this clear remember this will be called modus ponens please understand this is called modus ponens and this is called modus tollens okay is this is this crystal clear please tell me is this crystal clear so remember if you do like this if you go in the in the uh, forward direction okay if you go in a forward direction basically forward direction so if you are going in a forward direction then i can say this is modus ponens and if you are going in a backward direction this is called modus tollens okay so very simple so you can easily see uh, negation uh, if negation q happens then negation p will happen this is called modus ponens because you are going in the forward direction and this is called modus tollens is this clear anyone has any doubt mavit is there any doubt yes this is also called modus if you do like this q implies negation p and if q happens then negation p happens this is also modus ponens okay what is this this is also modus ponens is this clear this is also modus ponens but remember if you do like this if you do like this p implies negation q q then negation p this is called modus tollens okay because you are going in the reverse direction here you are going in the forward direction this is modus ponens here you are going in the reverse direction this is modus tollens so i hope this point is clear now let's move on now let's see the next question question number 2 another question this is gate 2015 question again on the argument this uh, rule of inference the question is talking about the argument basically okay so two statements are given to you let's look at these two statements and tell me the answer first of all you convert these statements into proposition logic format so let's assume a candidate is kind a candidate is kind let's call it k a candidate is kind let's call it k 
it uh, he will be elected let's call it e okay so he will not be elected this is negation e candidate is corrupt candidate is corrupt let's call it c let's call it c is this clear so what is happening here so this is your idea so candidate is corrupt so that is c candidate will be elected that is e candidate is kind that is k so tell me what is s1 what is s1 s1 is if c then negation e if c then negation e okay this is your s1 what is s2 tell me what is s2 if kind then elected if kind then elected okay this is your s2 so s1 is given to you s2 is given to you which statement follows the question is asking which statement follows from s1 s2 which will follow from s1 s2 let's solve this let's solve this so you can easily see that first of all you tell me one thing this means that c implies e so can i say e implies negation c can i say because contra positive yes or no you can easily see this is contra positive c what is s1 s1 is c implies negation e what is contra positive of this this is equivalent to what this is equivalent to contra positive correct do you agree this is equivalent to contra positive e implies negation c so you can write it e implies negation c okay now what is s2 s2 is k implies e s2 is k implies e so finally what will follow look at these two statements what you can follow if you look at these two statements you can do you remember there is a rule of inference where we say that transitivity implication is transitive do you, do you remember implication is transitive implication is transitive we have already seen this implication is transitive what the what this rule is called what this rule is called implication is transitive what this rule is called this is called hypothetical syllogism this is called hypothetical syllogism okay remember this rule is called hypothetical syllogism implication is transitive so here you can see implication is transitive this is called hypothetical hypothetical syllogism okay so this this thing so you can notice that if x implies y y implies z then definitely what will happen tell me what will happen if x is implying y y is implying z then definitely what will happen then definitely x will imply z okay this is this complete thing this complete thing is called hypothetical syllogism remember this is called hypothetical syllogism basically this is important this name is not important remember this name this name is not important but what is important this is important that implication is transitive okay so very simple these names are not important aditya the name is not important but this this thing is important that implication is transitive okay this thing is important so you can easily see that if x implies y y implies z then definitely then definitely i can say that x will imply z so here you can notice that k implies e e implies negation c so what i can say i can say definitely k implies negation c okay and this is equivalent to c implies negation k this is equivalent to c implies negation k okay so this is also correct this is also correct so your final answer will be what so tell me what is your final answer so the final answer will be you cannot see implies negation k negation k c implies negation k or i can say or i can say uh, k implies negation c k implies negation c so kind implies not known to be correct so the answer will be option c yes or no is this clear to everyone so if a person is kind he is not known to be corrupt please tell me did, did you understand this please tell me let me know did you understand this so the question is very simple that two statements are given to you and the question is asking what you can infer from these two statements from these two statements what we can infer so the question is really very simple remember s1 is given to you so this is statement on your screen this is statement is called s1 this is s1 so i can say for example you can notice this is s1 this is uh, sorry uh, this is s2 and this is s1 
okay so from these two statements what you can infer from these two statements you can infer that k implies negation c this is also correct okay because they are you cannot they are contrapositive right so in the question they can also give if he is corrupt then not kind okay this option also can be given is this clear if uh, corrupt then not kind like the, if this option is given tell me not kind then this also will be the answer is this clear are you getting my point in this situation this also will be correct because they are contrapositive a comma c they are contrapositive of each other so if this note is given to you then this is also correct this is also correct so this you have to take care okay very simple so this type of question they can ask you let's see the next question this is gate 2015 question another question on the same concept argument the same concept very simple concept let's solve this question so what the question is saying that in a room there is a room in which only two type of people are there type one type two okay there are two type of people remember there is type one person there is type two person two type of people this person and this person okay so two type of people you have now the question is saying that type one people will always tell the truth remember they will always tell the truth so this type one people they are truth people okay so these these are the truth people now what is the next they will uh, type two people will always lie okay so these are the liars now now you can notice you give a fair coin to a person in that room okay to whom we are giving this is not given yes or no without knowing the type he is from we don't know who is he so we just give a fair coin and tell him to toss and hide the result from you till you ask about it when you ask about it when you ask about it what statement you are getting you are getting this statement that the result is had if and only if I am telling the truth. Okay. If and only if I am telling the truth. Please tell me one thing. Please tell me one thing. I am telling the truth. It means what? Like this statement, can I say? I am telling the truth means I am type 1. Yes or no? Correct or not? Is this clear? Like telling truth means type 1. Telling truth. Telling truth means type 1 and type 1 means telling truth. Do you agree? Tell me, do you agree that telling truth means type 1 and, and uh, type 1 means telling truth? Yes or no? Because these are the truth, these are the true, uh, truth people and these are the liars. So you can notice, very simple, you can notice that telling truth, that means you are type 1 and if you are type 1, then you are telling truth. So these two things are same. Yes or no? There is a by implication. So these two things are basically same. I can say telling truth. Okay. Telling truth is equivalent to being type one. Telling truth that is equivalent to being type one. Is this clear? Let me know. Is this clear? So very simple point that if you are telling truth, that means you are, you are equivalent to type one. Okay. So what this statement is saying, this statement, I can say that result is head. The result is head. Let me call it H. Okay, so the result is had if and only if this is if and only if I am telling the truth means I am type one. Is this clear? Tell me, is this clear to everyone? Okay, so this is what the person is saying. The person is saying that I, uh, uh, the result is had if and only if I am type one. Is this clear? Please tell me because this is same as type one. This statement is same as type one. So this is statement you got. Now you can see that there are two cases possible. So you are getting to remember fi finally, when you ask, this is you, let's assume this is you. Okay. So let's assume this is you. Now you are asking, you are asking, you don't know who is uh, this, okay, the person who is, who is that person you don't know. So you are asking and what reply you are getting? Tell me what reply you are getting. You are getting this reply that had double implication T1. This is the reply you are getting. You are getting this reply had double implication T1. You got this reply. Okay. Now what you will do now you can create cases. There are only two cases, either the case one, either the person is either you are asking to the uh, type one person. Yes or no. Okay. You are asking to type one person. You are asking to type one person, correct? 
Is this clear? Or what is the case two? Tell me what is the case two? Okay, you are asking type uh, type two person. So either you are asking type two person, or you are asking type one person. Only two cases are possible. Either this case will happen, or this case will happen. Okay. Now the reply you are getting is same. This is the reply you are getting that head double implies type one. I am type one. Okay. Head double implies I am type one. Is this clear? This is the reply you are getting. So you tell me what will happen here. You know that in this case he is a type one. So in this case, can I say this is true? In this case, can I say this is true? In this case, this person is saying the truth. So this whole thing is also true. Please understand that you are asking the true true. Uh, you are asking the type one person. So this whole thing is also true, and this thing is also true because you are asking type one person. So this is also true. And this is also true. So what should be, uh, what should be this? Tell me what should be this? This must be true. This must be true. So you can easily see that from here. I can say as must be true means your result is head. So I can say this in this case, result is head. Is this clear? In this case, the result will be head. The result will be head in this case one. Now the case one is done. Let's see the case two. The case two is you are asking a type two person. So type two person is giving you this statement. What can you say? This is true or false. You are asking a type two person. Okay. You are asking a type two person. Type two person is telling you this thing. This statement is this true or false because he is a type two person. So he's a liar. So it means this is false. So it means this is false. Okay. Okay. Remember one more thing for this type two person. This is also false. Because he is, he is not type one because he is not type one. So this is also false. So what should be this H? What should be this H? Tell me this H must be true. Very good. Okay. Because this, this whole thing is false. This is a false. So H must be true. So finally I can say that in this case also H must be true means result is head. In this case also result is head. So in both the cases, the result is head, whether this case happen or this case happen result is definitely head. Whatever happens, the result is definitely head. Okay. Is this clear to everyone? Please tell me, did you understand this question? Very nice question. Very beautiful question. Tell me, did you understand this? Did you understand the analysis of this question? Let me know. This is a very beautiful question. Anyone has any doubt in this? Remember. If you have any doubt, you can ask. See, the question is very simple. Okay. Let me, let me tell you again, just, just focus on this question again. This is statement on your screen. This is given to you. So there are two type of person. There is type one. There, uh, there is a type one person and there is type two person. There are two type of people in a room. Okay. There is a room, this person, this person, these people are the truth people. These people, they always tell the truth. These are the truth telling people. They, whatever they will give you, they, they will give you true information. Okay. The information they will give you will be true. These are the type two people. These are liars. Okay. These are liars. Now you, this is you, you are asking what is the result? Okay. So they are tossing a coin basically. One of them is tossing a coin. One of them, one of these two people is tossing a coin. I don't know who is, who is tossing a coin. So basically one of them you are selecting. Okay. So one of them, the question is this, that one of them tossing coin, is this clear? I don't know who is tossing coin. I don't know the, who is the person who is toss, tossing coin. So let's assume the person who is tossing coin is let's assume a, okay. One of them, who is that? Let's call that person a. So this person a, okay. Person a, so he is tossing a coin. I don't know. This a is what this a is type one or type two. I don't know. Okay. Now you are asking this a, this is you, what you are asking. You are asking this a, what is the result? You are asking this a, what is the result of the toss? Because you are tossing a coin, right? Okay. So now you are asking what is the result? Is this clear? What you are doing? You are asking what is the result? This is your person A. This is the person A. Now you are asking result of toss. Result of toss. 
what this person is giving you what information this person is giving you tell me what information this person is giving you this person is giving you this information that result is had if and only if i am telling truth okay so this this is saying that result is had the person is saying result is had result is had if and only if i am telling the truth if and only if i am telling the truth okay is this clear tell me so far is this clear tell me so you ask what is the result then the person is saying that this is the state this is the information you are getting please understand please understand this is the information you are getting this is the information this a is giving you information given by a is this clear what information a is giving you so do you remember this is the information this complete this thing is the information given by a now now you can see that first of all you tell me one thing you just tell me simple simple point i am asking you there are two type of people what can you say about them what this means if someone is telling a truth if i am telling a truth then who i am if i am telling a truth who i am tell me if i am telling truth then who i am tell me if i am telling truth then who i am i am a type one person agree because the type one person will tell the truth is this clear let me know if i am telling the truth then it means i am type one person and if i am type one person then it means i am telling the truth is this clear so remember so this statement you can replace this statement you can replace with what this statement you can replace with what tell me this statement you can replace with i am type one okay is this clear let me know this statement i am telling truth because if i am telling truth then it means i am type one and if i am type one then i am telling truth very simple very simple thing okay okay if i if i say the truth then definitely means i am type one and if i am type one then i am telling the truth so this statement i am telling truth this statement i can replace with i am type one person so now what you can do now you can replace okay this this i am telling truth replace this with i am type one okay replace this with i am type one person please tell me understood so far understood so far now what i am saying now let's call this h result is had let's call this h i am type one person let's call this t1 okay let's call this t1 let's call this h so this is the idea now finally what information you are getting tell me this a is giving you what information this a is giving you what information this a what information this a is giving you this is giving you this information that as the result is had if and only if i am type one person okay i am type one person now you tell me there are two cases clear now how many cases we have there are two cases what is the case one now you are doing the analysis you are the cid okay remember now you are doing the analysis let's assume you are the cid acb pradyuman you are the daya okay so you can notice okay whatever like you are the acp now you tell me you are doing the analysis now you are thinking if this happens that i don't know who is this a who is this a i don't know if this a is if this a is a type 1 person then what will happen okay if this a is type 1 person so case one is case one is if a is type 1 person then tell me if a is actually type one person then what will what it means this information is correct agree do you agree that this information will be correct do you agree this information will be true this information will be true because a is type one person so this information will be true okay you tell me you tell me for this for this person for this a this what this is this is true or false for a in this case look at case number 1 focus on case number 1 so tell me focus on case number 1 you tell me this t1 yes he is t1 he is t1 so this is also true so this is also true this is also true so you tell me now this is true the whole thing is true so what is h 
so what is h tell me so h is true do you agree so you can see so in this case h will be true okay and h will be true means result is had because h means result is had so result is had is true result is had is true clear so in this case number 1 result is had please tell me did you get it case number 1 result is had okay in the case number 1 result is had okay what about case number 2 there is a case number 2 case number 2 is if a is a type 2 person if this a was type 2 person then definitely this information is false agree definitely definitely this information is false he is a liar so this information will be false now for this type 2 person this is also false because he is a type 2 person so he is not type 1 so this is also false now you tell me this whole thing is false this is false so this h must be if this h is false then this will be true yes or no are this is false if h is false then this whole thing will be true but the whole thing is false so i can say this is false the whole thing is false so h must be true so here i can say so this h must be true what is h h is result is had result is had so result is had is true so in the case number 1 also in the case number 2 also in both the cases what is happening tell me in in the both the cases result is had so whatever case okay so okay in all cases i can say in all cases result is had result is definitely had okay is this clear in all cases whatever case you take result is definitely had so this is your answer so finally the answer will be the result is had this will be the answer option a please tell me did you understand this this complete analysis of this question did you understand very simple question very easy question and very interesting question this type of questions uh, they should come in the gate exam definitely these are very beautiful questions in tifr they will ask you this type of questions may, uh, many times please let me know did you understand the complete analysis of this question let me know okay very good now let's move on to the next question this is your another question from the gate exam gate 1987 let's see this question gate 1987 the question is saying that show that the conclusion follows from the premises premises are given to you from these premises this conclusion follows so first of all you write the argument first you write the argument form okay so what is the argument form the premises are given to you p is a premise and this is a premise p is a premise p implies q or p and r implies q this or p and p and r implies q okay so these are the premises and the conclusion the question is asking does this conclusion follow the question is asking remember the question what the question is asking these are the premises from these premises does conclusion follow so the question is asking is this valid argument remember the question is simply asking that from these premises this conclusion follow or not so the question is asking is this valid argument or not remember very simple question extremely simple question that the question is asking is this valid argument okay question what is the question is it valid is this valid argument this is the question so let's solve it tell me what is the best method what is the best way what is the best way the best way is make conclusion false so how many ways to make conclusion false you tell me how many ways to make conclusion false how many ways if you are making conclusion false how many ways only one way only one way there is only one way what is that what is that that r is true q is false okay 
is this clear r will be true q will be false very good remember this is your conclusion please understand this is the conclusion this is a implication statement r implies q you are making it false there is only one way to make it false only one way single way that is r is true q is false this is the only way to make it false okay now what is our next step tell me what will be your next step your next step will be to make all the premises true can you make all the premises true let's start with this let's start with p okay now 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 so p is true remember r is true q is false remember this r is true q is false so this p is true q is false okay q is false p is true r is true q is a false so ultimately what what we got so you can see that this will be false you can easily see this will be false true implies false this will be false okay and you can note this also will be false true implies false this is will be false true and false that is also false okay true and false true and false so you can see that okay i can say this true and false this also will be false false or false false so this argument is valid right yes or no we cannot make all the premises true after making conclusion false you are making conclusion false after making it false you cannot make all the premises true whatever are the premises after making it false it is not possible that all are true okay after making it false it is not possible to make not possible it is not possible to make all premises true it is not possible to make all promises uh, all all pre, uh, all premises true okay so this complete situation this means you have a valid argument okay so this is the best way do you agree whenever you have uh, this uh, argument related question this is the best way is this clear so very simple question so you can notice this is a valid argument so remember this this method is the best method to solve any re argument related question okay very simple very simple question okay now let's see the next question the next question is define the validity of well framed formula first of all what is well formed formula you might be thinking you might be thinking what is well formed formula this is actually nothing this is just your propositional formula we have already seen the definition of propositional logic formula right propositional log logic formula we have already seen the definition okay so you tell me the answer for this what is the validity of propositional logic formula validity means always true validity means always true for all assignment of propositional variables for all assignments or i can say for all truth value assignments for all truth value assignments of propositional variables this is the definition of validity yes or no okay now let's see this question tell me the answer now the question is asking this is a gate 1989 question which of the following well formed formula are equivalent which of them are equivalent we already know that p implies q is equivalent to p dash or q correct and we also know that p implies q is equivalent to contrapositive okay that is equivalent to contrapositive this also we know so negation q implies negation p so we already know this that p implies q is equivalent to negation p or q and p implies q is equivalent to negation q implies negation p so remember a is equivalent a is equivalent to what a is equivalent to b they are contrapositive a is equivalent to b and you can see that that is equivalent to c okay so a equivalent to b equivalent to c so these are equivalent to each other but you can notice that this uh, uh this option d if you look at this option d option d is this this is equivalent to negation p implies q okay so this option d this is equivalent to negation p implies q or this is equivalent to q or p 
so this is the idea okay very simple question this is i can say um, just a uh, extremely simple question so these are basically equivalent all of them all of them are equivalent a is equivalent to b is equivalent to c because remember p implies q is equivalent to p dash or q similarly p implies q is equivalent to contra positive this is the contra positive of p implies q for p implies q this is the contra positive okay so let's move on now let's see this question this is a gate 1990 question which of the following formula are valid remember this is a propositional logic so they can also ask you tautology you know that this is a propositional logic question so in the propositional logic question valid means tautology valid also means tautology tautology means always true tautology means always true something which is always true okay tautology in the propositional logic this is the definition so tell me the answer there are two ways to solve this type of question either you take by case yes okay the by case method is basically a very beautiful method so you can you can solve the question by case method so let me solve uh, this question like option a by case let's solve this question by case so what is option a in the question option a is given that p implies q and q implies r implies p implies r and this statement is valid right and this you don't even have to do anything because this is your rule of inference this is the transitivity of implication do you agree this uh, this option if you see this option is saying that p implies q p implies q and q implies r okay so if this happens then what you can say tell me if this happens then what you can say p implies q and q implies r if this happens if this happens then definitely p will imply r okay then definitely p will imply r this is called what like you already know if p implies q and q implies r then definitely then definitely p will imply r so this is called transitivity of implication correct this is your transitivity of implication transitivity of implication so this is very simple but in the gate exam if you can't find it like this you might be thinking sir in the gate exam if if if, if i don't focus on this if i don't focus on transitivity then how can i solve this question right yes how can i solve this question in the gate exam if i don't focus on this point then also you can solve very easily on your screen this formula is given to you you want to check so there are two methods please understand i am giving you method number 1 by case method this is a beautiful method this is very simple method what you do you just do by case method so there are two how many cases possible there are only two cases possible one case is p true okay another case is p false only two cases are possible either the p will be true or the p will be false very simple either this is possible or this is possible now you tell me when p is true let's call this formula option a the complete formula i am calling it option a so when p is true then okay i am calling this lhs i am calling this rhs because this is the implication this is a implication so you tell me if p is true then what is lhs if p is true so when p is true then what is lhs one thing you can uh, simply notice that uh, whenever you have this alpha implies beta this alpha implies beta if alpha is true if alpha is true then what you can say then you can say what is this tell me if alpha is true if this alpha is true then what you can say that this is equivalent to this is equivalent to beta correct because 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 this is equivalent to alpha dash or beta now if alpha is true then this is false then this is false false or beta that is a beta so you can easily see that if alpha is true then alpha implies beta is beta similarly similarly if beta is false then what can you say about alpha implies beta tell me if beta is already false you know beta is false then tell me what can you say what is alpha implies beta what will be that 
so that will be negation alpha yes or no because if beta is false then your answer will be negation alpha so this is going to be your answer tell me one more thing please quickly tell me one more thing if beta is true if beta is true what can you say about alpha implies beta what you can say if a beta is true if this beta is true then this alpha implies beta this also will be true right and similarly if alpha is false if alpha is false then what can you say about alpha implies beta alpha implies beta that is a true okay so very simple so these points are very important they can save you a lot of time so now you can notice what will be lhs if p is true so when p is true then this will be q do you agree this will be q when p is true when this is true then this whole thing will be q because this is already true true implies q is a q okay so i can say that will be q and if p is true then this will be like i can say q and q implies r so that will be q and q uh, uh, so tell me what is this what is this one q and q dash or r so what that will be that will be q and q dash or q r so that is basically your lhs is basically q r okay lhs is basically q and r i can say q r this is your lhs what is rhs tell me what is rhs if p is true then this rhs will be r so you tell me what will be a now what will be a option uh, option a you can notice option a is qr implies r q and r implies r so definitely this is true yes or no because q and r will always imply r if q and r are true you can easily see that if x and y are true if x and y are true then definitely x will be true okay similarly if x and y are true then definitely y will be true so these things you can easily see if these things are true then definitely x will be true if these things are true then definitely y will be true so you can easily see that a will be true okay so in this case in this case number 1 a is true please tell me did you get it case number 1 a is true case number 1 this a is it true what about case 2 what about the case 2 so in the case 2 what is rhs only tell me the rhs just tell me the rhs what will be rhs p is false so this will be true now you tell me you don't need lhs right yes or no anything implies true what is option a anything imply lhs implies true lhs implies true so that will be true anything implies true that is it true so you can notice in the case 2 also a is true so in both the cases a is true is this clear both the cases a is true let me know please tell me so remember all cases both or i can say in all case in every case whatever case you take in every case this option a is true what that means what that means tell me option a is true in all, every case in every case this is true what this means this means this a is a tautology or i can say this a is valid so you can solve like this very easily by case method this will save you a lot of time okay so this by case method a lot of practice we have already done and this is a very easy method did you understand this method method please tell me did you understand the method 2 there is method 2 what is that do you remember what was method 2 our our method 2 whenever you have implication this is lhs this is rhs whenever you have implication there is a implication what is the method 2 the method 2 was what was the method 2 the method 2 was make it false yes or no make rhs false try to make lhs true yes or no make rhs false make rhs false then try to make lhs true then try to make lhs true if you can then what i can say if you can then what i can say if you can then what i will say tell me so this is your method number 2 make rhs false then try to make lhs true if you can if you can 
then not tautology then not valid if you can then not valid okay very simple method extremely simple method if you can then not valid so let's solve this method by this method let's solve the question by this method so let's make this false let's make it false so if you make it false what will happen if you make this false what how many ways how many ways only one way right only one way what is that way there is only one way that p must be true r must be false okay p must be true r must be false there is only one way now can you make now can you make lhs true okay now try to make lhs true try try to make lhs true okay so let's try to make lhs true can you make this lhs true remember r remember p is true remember p is true okay and r is false and r is false so what this means true implies q what this means that is q q implies false that is negation q what is this this is false so can you make lhs true try to make lhs true can you make lhs true can you make lhs true try to make lhs true not possible so you can see not possible what implies what that means not possible means this option a is valid option a is valid okay let's move on what about option b p implies q implies negation p implies negation q what about this option tell me what about this option option b let's see option b option b is saying that p implies q implies negation p implies negation q and this is wrong right because it's like it's like implication involve uh, implying inverse yes or no it means that this implication statement this is a implication statement and this implies it's a, it's a inverse so this is definitely not valid implication statement is implying it's inverse this thing is in valid or you can solve the question very easily if you want then by case you can solve or you can solve by simplification this question you can also solve by simplification but this question you can also solve by uh, case method by case so let's uh, let's see by case so tell me how many cases quickly quickly tell me by case how many cases case 1 case 2 case 1 p is true case 2 p is false see this question this this method is very fast very fast method extremely fast two two uh, two case p is true p is false so tell me when p is true then what this will be when p is true what this will be tell me when p is true what this will be this will be q this will be q when p is true what this will be p is true so this will be this will be true anything implies true that is true so in the case one in the case one you got true what about case two what about case two if p is false then this will be true right if p is false then definitely this will be true because p is false so this will be true now if p is false then this will be true implies negation q true implies negation q that is negation q okay that is negation q okay tell me about this one what is this this is negation q can you make it false this is negation q yes i can make it false so you can see this is contingency right option b is contingency agree or not because in the case 2 in the case 2 you got negation q so you can make it true also you can make it false also in case 1 you got true but in case 2 you got negation q so you can see this option b this is contingency tell me is this understood is this understood that this is contingency why this is contingency because it depends on q you can make it false also you can make it true also let me know is this understood so you can easily see that this option b if you look at option b then i can say that this option b what i can say 
I can say this option B is true. When this option B is true, this option B is true. When P is true, when P is true, so this option B is true. When P is true, or Q is false. Okay, so this option B is true, and this option B is false. When P is false, and Q is true. Okay, so in this situation, this option B is false. I hope this point is clear. In this one word, what I what I can see in one word, what I can say for option B. In one word, what I can say of option B. Option B is false in this case. In this case, option B is false. So in one word, I can say option B is basically Q implies P. Is this clear? Option B is basically Q implies P. Let me know is this understood? Because Q implies P is false in this case. Let me know. Understood. So this option B is basically nothing but Q implies P because option B is true when P is true or Q is false, and this option B is false when P is false and Q is true. So you can easily say that uh, this simply means that you have Q implies P. So option B is Q implies P. What? Okay. So this is anyway not valid. What about option C? The best way is by case. Yes or no? C. Look at option C. Look at the face of option C. You can see that by case is the best method for option C. Option C is P and negation P or negation Q implies Q. This is the question. The best method is case. Okay, case one, case two. Immediately you can do either. Okay, let me create cases by Q. Either case, either Q is true. Or Q is false. Only two cases are possible. So in this case, what will be the answer? In this case, what is your option C? When you have this case, when Q is true, then the option C will be true. If this is true, then the whole thing will be true. Okay. So whole thing will be true if this is true. If this Q is true, then the whole thing will become true. What about this? Q is false. If this Q is false, then then what will be this option C? So option C will be if this Q is false. Remember the Q is false. So Q is false means this is true. Okay, Q is false. So automatically means this is true. So this will be true. True and P that means P. So P implies false. What is P implies false? That is negation P. Okay, P implies false. That is negation P. So you can easily see again. You can see that this option C is what. Option C depends on P. So again, you can notice option C is contingency. Is this clear? Look at option C. Option C is contingency. Again, you can see that option C is, uh, you can make it true also. You can make it false also. In one word, what you can say about option C? Look at option C. Just look at option C. Option C is true when when option C is true, option C is true. When Q is true, or either Q is true, then option C is true. Either Q is true or P is false. Correct. Okay. And remember, this option C is false. When this option C is false, this option C is false. When it is false, it is false when when Q is false and P is true. Ultimately, what your option C is? Can anyone tell me? What your option C is? Look at this and tell me what your option C is. What is option C? Option C is false. When Q is false, P is true. So option C is basically P implies Q. Okay. This is your option C. That is P implies Q. Very good. Okay. So this is your analysis of option C. This is also invalid. What about the next? What about the next? P implies R. Q also implies R. If one of them will happen, then Q will happen. Sorry. If one of them will happen, then R will happen. This is a beautiful question. P implies R. Either P implies R. 
or q implies r either this will imply this or this will imply this if one of them happens then r will happen the this is what this is valid or not tell me so remember this is invalid what is the reason this statement look at this statement look at option d this option d is saying that p implies r and q also implies r then then if one of them will happen then if one of them will happen like p or q will happen then definitely r will happen first of all let's solve this question intuitively let's solve this question intuitively why this is false sorry why this is invalid intuitively you can see that the question is saying that are the either this happens sorry this is over here in this question this is over here so the question is saying that either this happens either p will imply r or q will imply r one of them will definitely happen so you can assume that this can happen agree do you agree one of them will definitely happen either p implies r or q implies r so let me assume this happens let me assume let me assume this happens and this does not happen let me assume q implies r but p does not imply r now you can see that if one of them happen can you guarantee r if one of them happen can you guarantee r no because maybe p will happen yes or no because maybe p happens maybe p happens and you can notice if p happens then r may or may not happen r may or may not happen intuitively you can solve like this this is the intuition did you understand this intuition is there anyone here who understood this intuition intuitively you can solve the question like this tell me did you understand this intuition please tell me intuition is very simple you are saying that p implies r or q implies r either p will imply r either this will imply this or 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 q will imply r so you can see that one of them at least one of them will imply r so let me assume q imply r let me assume let me assume q imply r i am assuming p does not imply r now you can see that this is saying that if one of them happens then r will happen okay if one of them happens if one of them happens then r will happen this is false why because maybe p will happen or if p happens then you cannot say r will happen this is the intuitive method if you understood this then very good if you did not understand then what is the method tell me if you understood this intuitive method then remember it is very good that you are uh, that uh, you can do these questions intuitively but if you did not understand do not worry about it just forget about it now you can solve this question very easily by case method again the again you can create the cases so what is the case one case one you can consider r okay you can cons you can create cases on r either r is true or r is false only two cases are there case one case two okay so when r is true then everything is very simple when r is true then this will be true okay when r is true then this is going to be true when r is true when r is true then this will be true this will be true so you can easily see that true implies true that is true so the case one i can say in the case one you have it true okay in the case one you can say in the case one you are getting true okay so when r is true then definitely your option d will be true what about when r is false tell me what happens when r is false when r is false remember when r is false then what is p implies false tell me tell me what is p implies false when r is false what is p implies false that is negation p that is p dash okay so you can say that is p dash p dash or when r is false when r is false then that is q dash okay that is q dash so this imply this imply when r is false then this will be p or q dash now you can easily say that p dash or q dash does it imply 
पीडेस एंड क्यूडेस टेल मी टेल मी टेल मी लेट मी नो पीडेस और क्यूडेस डज इट इंप्लाई पीडेस एंड क्यूडेस वन ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स ओके एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स डज इट मीन बोथ आर फॉल्स लेट मी नो लेट मी नो एट लीस्ट वन ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स दिस सेज दैट एट लीस्ट वन ऑफ देम इज फॉल्स does it mean both of them are false so this is this is clearly i can say this is a contingency okay so this this you can see this option d is a contingency so you can see finally i can say that option d remember so you can easily see this uh this is contingency on your screen this is a contingency so finally i can say option d is contingency so this option d that is contingency did you understand all these questions so this is also not valid so for this question only option a is valid if anyone has any doubt you can ask let me give you one variation let me give you a variation can you try this intuitively please think intuitively i am saying that p implies r okay either this will imply r or q will imply r either p will imply r or q will imply r and and p and r have p and q happens then can i say definitely r will happen can i say tell me can i say definitely r will happen did you understand the question very simple question i am saying that either this is or either this will happen or this will happen at least one of them will happen either this or this at least one of them will happen at least one of them will definitely happen if both of them will happen then r will happen of course yes or no see intuitively you can see this is valid this is valid intuitively because i am saying that either this will happen or 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 this will happen either p will imply r or q will imply r at least one of them p comma q at least one of them will imply r there are there is p there is q at least one of p comma q at least one of them will imply r now both are happening then definitely r will happen so this is variation that it will be valid so can you see intuitively please tell me can you see intuitively you can easily see that intuitively this is a valid okay so you can also solve the question very uh, i can say with intuition so you can easily read the question and you can uh, solve the or you can solve the question with your method no problem so remember the same question they can ask you like this the same question they will write like this what they will say they will write like this that uh, this is how they will write that p implies r or q implies r either p will imply r q will imply r this implies that this implies that if both of them will happen then r will happen so this statement is valid is this clear let me know is this clear so this is valid the same previous statement this same thing this same thing they can give you like this like this they can give you so what this is saying this is saying that at least one of p comma q imply r there is p there is q at least one of them will imply r now then 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 i can say that if both of them will happen then r will happen yes of course so this is a valid this is a variation and this is valid you can solve the question by case if you did not want to understand like if you did not understand intuitively then you can solve easily by case method okay so this by case method will save you a lot of time remember a lot of time you can solve by case method all you have to remember these things like you don't have to remember you have to understand like you can notice that true implies anything that is alpha okay false implies anything that is true similarly anything implies true that is true similarly anything implies false that is negation alpha so these things will help you a lot 
and if you forget them then what you can do if you forget them then you can do like this you know that alpha implies beta is same as alpha dash or beta so if you forget you can understand like this you can solve like this if by chance you forget so these things are very helpful many times this these will help you but i am just saying that don't make any mistake if you are not confident then you can do like this alpha implies beta is alpha dash or beta now let's move on this question we have already done correct so remember for this question this is a gate 1991 question this is a beautiful question and let me tell you that for this question most of the students they get the correct answer by the wrong method this question is very beautiful you have to understand the difference between proposition formula and proposition variable many students they don't understand the difference between propositional formula and propositional variable this difference you should understand so many students are solving this question getting the correct answer by the wrong method this is the problem when you get the correct answer by the wrong method that is the problem so you can find the correct solution detailed video solution you can find on the gate or for website in the best selected answer okay just go to this link just go to this question on the get or flow website and then in the best selected answer you will find detailed video solution you can check it out so this question already we have done so i will not do this again you can check you can check out the video solution in the best selected answer okay let's see this question quickly tell me the answer this is gate 1992 question which of the following is a tautology some options are given to you this is very intuitive you tell me if a or b is true then can you say b and c will be true very intuitive it is very 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 intuitive if a or b is true can you say b and c will be true tell me tell me tell me if this is true can you say this will be true can you say this will be true tell me this is what i am asking can you say this will be true the answer is no yes or no if a or b is true then we cannot say b and c will be true you can easily uh, you can easily solve this question by case method so again you can notice this is a or b implies b and c so actually you don't uh, you don't even have to do this you can just simplify this if you want you can simplify this question or the question is asking for tautology can you make it false the question is remember the question is asking for okay just make it false tell me how to make it false because the question is asking for tautology okay so just make it false so how to make it false very simple i can make this true i can make this uh, i can make a true i can make b false that's it that's enough that's enough to make option a false in this situation you can notice option a that is definitely this option this statement becomes false in this situation so this is definitely not tautology or you can see like this the same question you can solve by this method that you can easily see that a or b it does not imply b and c okay very easily you can see that you can make it false still you can make it true okay so you can make it false you can make for example you can make b false or you can make c false that is your choice for example you can make c false so you can make it false and still you can make it true just make a true so like this you can solve so this is a very easy question or you can simplify this a or b the question is saying a or b implies b and c you can simplify this so we already know that if you have alpha implies beta then that is basically alpha dash or beta correct this alpha implies beta this is alpha dash or beta so you can do this a or b negation or b c what is a or b negation you can apply the de morgan formula okay in this you can apply the de morgan formula so that will be a dash b dash or b c okay you can clearly see that this is a contingency this is a contingency so this is a very easy question you can solve this question in many ways anyway this is not 
टोटोलॉजी वॉट अबाउट दिस इफ ए एंड बी इज ट्रू देन कैन एस ए बी और सी विल बी ट्रू इंटूटिवली कैन यू सी दिस अरे जस्ट टेल मी इफ ए एंड बी इज ट्रू इफ दीज आर ट्रू इफ दिस इज ट्रू देन कैन यू से दैट बी और सी विल बी ट्रू देन कैन यू से दिस विल बी ट्रू अफकोर्स अफकोर्स यू कैन से बिकॉज इफ दिस इज ट्रू देन इट मीन्स बोथ ए कोमा बी आर ट्रू ओके if this is true if this a or if if this a and b is true then it means that both a uh, a is also true b is also true then definitely this will be true because b is true so definitely this will be true so this is a valid what about option c option c is then saying that a or b is true then can i say b dash or c will be true tell me a or b is true if a or b is true then can i say b dash or c will be true definitely no this is invalid definitely this is invalid why you can easily see that uh, you can easily create this for example this a or b is true you can easily make it false okay to make it true what you can do for example i you can make a true you can easily make it false you can make c false you can make b true okay so this is very easy to make it false please tell me did you get it what i am saying is this understood a or b implies b implies c so you can notice that a or b this does not imply this a or b this does not imply b dash or c very easy you can make this true still you can make this false okay you can make this true still you can make this false so definitely this implication is not valid this implication is not tautology okay what about this see there is a problem here uh, basically there is a problem here which is which implication we should consider like uh, this implication is not associative so let's see option d option d is saying that a implies b implies b implies c this is the question now this question you can solve either like this either you can solve the question like this or you can solve the question like this okay let's solve in both ways let's solve in this way in this way what you can do you can simplify simplification is very easy for this so for this question you can just do the simplification because that is very 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 easy you can write it a dash or okay you can write it b dash or you can write it b dash or c so your answer will be a dash or b dash or b dash or c and that is your like a dash or b dash or c this is definitely contingency correct yes or no this is definitely contingency okay so this is contingency what about the other side if you do like this if you solve the question like this then what is the answer so if you solve the question like this then again uh, you can uh, solve it very easily so either you can do the simplification or you can do whatever you like uh, whatever method you want to apply you can apply you can just do the simplification this will be like a bar or b okay implies b bar or c now again you can do the simplification so that will be like a bar or b whole bar or b bar or c now you can apply the de morgan law here here you can apply the de morgan law so that will be a b bar or b bar or c now this rule we have already seen that alpha or alpha beta that is absorption rule okay so this is called uh, this is called absorption law so this is your absorption law so what you can do basically this you can this is nothing but b dash so finally again you will get b dash or c again contingency so whatever you do it will be contingency right is this clear so whatever you do it will remain contingency so this uh, this does not matter this will not be a tautology so your answer will be option b is this understood 
is this understood whatever you do whether you saw like this or whether you saw like this whatever you do this option d will not be tautology this option d is not going to be tautology okay one more thing i want to tell you that this uh, this i want to tell you first of all implication remember is not associative right yes or no correct Impli implication is not associative what it means it means that p implies q implies r if you do like this this is not equivalent to p implies q implies r so they are not equivalent i hope this is clear these are not equivalent but 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 by chance if there is a question and you have to uh you have to assume then you should assume that this is a right implication okay so remember this is i want to tell you that uh in worst case like if nothing is given if nothing is given and if simply if this is given like in the state in the exam if they give you something like this okay if they give you something like this if this is given if this is given then what you can do you can just simply assume if nothing is given then you can simply assume right associative okay is this clear if parenthesis is not given then you can assume right associative but actually this should be given remember if this is not given like a, for example if this parenthesis is not given if this if this parenthesis is not given then the question is very poor then the question is not correct the question is not well framed the question is poorly framed but still you can solve the question by assuming right associative so if this is given then what you will assume you will assume this okay is this understood if nothing is given if this is given to you without parenthesis like no parenthesis is given for example if this is given no problem if this is given no problem but if no parenthesis is given if this is directly given then you can directly assume that right associative this is what you can assume okay now let's see this question so <clears throat> what about this question this is a first order logic question so we will solve this question in the first order logic session at this point we will not solve it we will see this question in the first order logic session because right now we are discussing propositional logic so do not worry about this question we will take it in the first order logic session now let's see this question tell me the answer quickly tell me the answer it is very simple prove that proposition c is logical consequence of this formula a formula is given to you for this formula c is a logical consequence so this is a argument question logical logical consequence means basically this is a valid argument so we have to prove that this is a valid argument okay this logical consequence it means valid argument so all we have to do we have to prove that a and a implies b or c and b implies negation a this implies c we have to prove that this implies c okay so this argument so how to how to prove it tell me whether this is valid or not so the question is asking is it valid the question is saying that is it valid this is what the question is saying is it valid so tell me how to solve it very simple make it false extremely simple these questions are very simple just make it false so you are making this c false now what you will do you will try to make it true okay you will you will you will try to make it true so this is what you will try to make it true so if i want to try to make it true remember c is already false if i want to make it true there are and this is and this is and so what should happen to a i want to make it true i want to try to make it true the whole thing this whole thing i want to make it true can i make it true this whole thing so tell me to to make it true what should be a 
to make it true what should be a a must be true right right because there is and here there is and here so this a must be true okay now 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 a is true okay so can, how can i make this true because there is and here there is and here so you tell me how to make this true so b cannot be false do you agree b cannot be false because if b is false then this will become false so i cannot make b false so b must be true okay very good so far everything is good now b is true a is true so this is false so automatically this is what so automatically this is false so tell me can you make premises true can you make premises true after making conclusion false after making conclusion false after making this false we can't make all premises true we can't make all premises true okay we can't make all premises true so this is a valid argument is this clear so this is a valid argument this argument is valid is this i hope this this point is clear see these argument questions are very easy do you agree and these are very efficiently you are solving you are solving these questions very efficiently you are saving a lot of time let me tell you many students most of the students they solve the same question the argument question they will solve with very long method let me tell you i have seen many students the same question they will solve with a long method okay so you should be efficient so tell me the answer for this question quickly very simple gate 90 93 question this is the proposition given to you what is this you can just do the simplification here see this is a simple question where you have p and p dash or q so you can just do the simplification here uh, there is nothing here so in this question let's do the simplification so you can apply the distributive property this distributive property you can apply so it will be like pp dash or pq okay pp dash or pq so this pp dash this is false false or pq that is pq so ultimately you got pq that is a contingency okay so logically equivalent to pq so the answer will be option b very simple answer logically equivalent to pq you got pq very simple okay let's move on to the next question tell me the answer for this p comma q are the propositions using only truth table decide does not imply does not imply p implies negation q decide if this is true or false decide if this is true or false so let's check it out tell me does this imply does this does this imply p imply negation q is this valid tell me are you are you getting my point i am asking does this imply this does it imply this is this valid is it valid let's check it out so let's check whether this is valid or not again how will you check again how are you going to check again you cannot this is the conclusion let's make it false how many ways anyone how many ways to make it false tell me how many ways are there to make it false there is only one way what is that p must be true and negation q must be false p must be true and negation q must be false negation q must be false means q must be true okay so p must be true q must be true now 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 can i make it true can i make it true yes yes i can make it true so it means what so it means what so this is a invalid argument invalid argument what it means it means that this does not imply this agree agree or not it means this p this 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 does not imply remember this does not imply this does not imply p implies q dash okay so i can say this does not imply so does not imply is true 
yes or no so the answer will be true because the question is asking this does not imply this yes that is true correct or not is this clear to everyone that this statement this statement does not infer this statement does not infer p implies q dash this statement does not infer p implies q dash so the question is asking the question the question is asking this does not imply this okay this does not imply this is this true or false this does not imply this is this true or false this is a true so the answer will be true okay please tell me did you understand all these things all these questions we have seen many questions we have seen back to back we are solving the questions please take your copy pen don't watch the video like a movie it's like uh, you can think like this you are solving we we are together solving okay you me we are together solving these questions you can understand you can think like this so don't watch it like a movie take your copy pen solve the question okay with me i am also solving you also solve okay and whatever i am telling you you can listen to that like what i what i am telling you those things you can listen now let's see the next what is the next question this is gate 1995 question the question is saying that the obtain the principal conj uh, the canonical conjugative uh, sorry conjugative normal form for this for this so let me tell you what is this actually this concept is very simple what is conjunctive normal form canonical conjunctive normal form what is that canonical canonical conjunctive normal form what is that cnf canonical cnf cnf so what is that canonical cnf so remember this is actually nothing this is nothing but your in the boolean algebra you study something called sum of product product of sum yes or no so this is product of sum very simple so this canonical remember this uh, like this cnf if you notice this cnf okay so in the propositional logic i am let me tell you in the propositional logic in the propositional logic you have cnf and in the boolean algebra in digital logic so this we study in the discrete mathematics in the discrete mathematics we study this and this we study in the digital logic what is the connection let me tell you the connection is very simple that this conjunctive normal form c means conjunctive okay c means conjunctive conjunction means what and or or conjunction means what and or or conjunction that means and or or that means and okay and means product do you agree and means product so this is same as your product of sum are you getting my point product so these things are basically same so is this under, like will you forget about it now in future will you forget who is uh, cnf is pos or sop so this is a pos is this understood and dnf disjunctive normal form disjunctive normal form this means disjunctive disjunction means what disjunction means or yes or no disjunction means or so you can see that dnf means sop is this understood cnf means pos and dnf means sop i hope this point is clear so what is canonical cnf that is same as canonical that is same as canonical cnf that is your product of sum so that is canonical product of sum what is canonical product of sum anyone want to tell me anyone want to tell me what is canonical product of sum canonical canonical product of sum 
so this is your this is your product of this is your product of our false max terms this concept we have already seen in the in the uh, in the digital logic correct the product of all false max terms is this understood see if you have any doubt in this question if you are not understanding this question then don't worry about it because in the digital logic you will understand this we have already seen in this in the digital logic this concept this pos concept this max term concept okay all these concept we have already seen this pos sop max term min term canonical sop canonical pos all these concepts we have already seen in the digital logic so i am just telling you that canonical pos in the digital logic we have already seen this that this is nothing but product of all false max terms okay so you have to find product of all false max terms this is your question in this question you have to find product of all false uh, or uh, product of all false max terms so this formula is given to you so what is the formula so you can see this is the expression that is given to you expression is p and q expression is p and q or negation q and r negation q and r so this is the statement that is given to you uh, very simple now we uh, how many uh, variables are there tell me can anyone tell me how many variables are there there are three propositional variable so now can you find out okay this uh, this is given to you now can you find out the min terms from this from this can you find out the min terms so on your screen this is already given to you uh, how to find out the min terms from this so you can easily see that this is like it is like pq or q dash r so how to find out the min terms it you can easily see uh, in the digital logic all these things we have seen so i am again telling you if you are not understanding don't worry in the digital logic you can study all these concepts we have already seen this in the digital logic so you can solve this question from the digital logic very 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 easily this is a question from digital logic you can understand like that so remember how to find out the all the true min terms like all the min terms where function is true this is your function where it is true so that is very simple like it's like pqr so let me let me call it e is p e uh, let me call it e and the pqr these are the variables pqr so here you can easily see p is 1 q is 1 now this r either can be 0 or this can be 1 so here i can say that this is a min term 6 uh, this is a min term 7 and similarly what will happen here it will happen that it will be like 0 1 pqr so it will be like 0 0 1 okay either it will be 0 0 1 or it will be 1 0 1 0 0 1 means that is min term 1 1 0 1 means that is min term 5 so we have found the true min terms all these are the true min terms for these the function is true Oh, okay for all the, for all of them your function is true for all of them i can say your function e is it true for all of them now you can easily see so what will be the false max terms if you know the true min terms then what are the false max terms tell me anyone want to tell me what are the false max terms like if these are the min terms then what are the max terms if these are the min terms if these are the min terms for these the function is true okay for these you can notice the function e is true then for the remaining so capital m0 capital m2 capital m3 capital m4 so like this so these are your uh, now can you write this this is your false max term so can you write this as pqr so this is a max term this is a sum term so this is going to be a sum term summation so tell me what that will be m0 all of them are 0 0 0 so how how do you write it so you write it as p or q or r okay so this will be p or q or r okay similarly what this will be 0 1 0 
जीरो वन जीरो सो दिस विल बी पी और क्यू बार और आर जीरो वन जीरो वॉट दिस विल बी दिस विल बी जीरो वन वन सो इट विल बी लाइक दिस एंड वॉट विल बी दिस दिस विल बी पी बार और क्यू बार और आर और आर बार so in the digital logic all these things we have seen so your final answer will be what your final answer what is the final answer canonical sop sorry canonical pos so what is canonical pos so you can see that canonical pos will be you just do the product of all these p or q or r product p or q bar or r p or q bar or r product p or q bar or r bar product p bar or q bar sorry this is four right sorry sorry this will be four uh sorry for that this will be four so it will be like max term uh, this is four four so that is 100 so that is p bar or q or r okay so that will be p bar or q or r it will be p bar or q or r so this is your answer those students who did not understand this this is a question from digital logic please understand this is a question from digital logic okay because remember canonical conjunctive normal form that is nothing but as i told you this is cnf conjunctive normal form this is nothing but product of sum and similarly this dnf this is nothing but sop how how can you understand you can understand like this disjunction means summation and this conjunction means product so you can understand like this so ultimately remember this is just a digital logic question please understand this is a digital logic question is there anyone who understood this because all these concepts we have already seen in the digital logic every concept all the things that we have applied how to find the min term how to find the max term okay what is canonical pos you can notice canonical pos canonical product of sum that is your product of all false max terms okay this is your product of sum so all these concepts are already covered in the digital logic course you can check it out you can uh, you can study in the digital logic course all these things are already covered please tell me how many of you understood this this question how many of you understood let me know this is a gate 1995 question how many of you understood this okay very good very good so let's move on now let's see this question quickly tell me the answer i think this is enough for today let's see this last question this is gate 1995 question so tell me if the proposition is true if the proposition is true means this is given to you that this is true okay this is given to you this is true if the proposition is true then the truth value of this proposition what that will be what that will be so this is already given to you like negation p implies q this is true okay this is already given to you as true what it means what it means tell me this is true it means that negation p or q or i can say p dash or q it is p dash or q that is true okay this p dash or q this is it true this is given to you so uh, sorry p or q, p or q sorry p or q is true that is given to you that p or q is true okay means at least one of them is true correct yes or no it means at least one of them is true at least one of q comma q is it true at least one of them is it true okay now the question is asking what is the truth value of in this situation find the truth value of p dash or p implies q p dash or p implies q so tell me at least one of them is true remember so you can simplify this 
first of all you can simplify this so when you simplify this then this will be this at least one of them is true then can you say something can you say something at least one of them is true can you say something here remember this can be true also and this can be false also do you agree do you agree this can be true also this can be false also because at least one of them is true this question is saying at least one of them is true now you can easily see that this can be true also this can be false also for example this will be false when this will be false this will be false when p when q is false and p is true okay then you can note this will be false and this will be true when this will be true this will be true when q is true p is uh, p is true so you can easily say that this will be this can be false also this can be true also okay so i can say that uh, what about this can it have multiple like okay tell me tell me tell me like okay which statement is correct is this statement correct or is this statement correct option b is correct or option d is correct what is correct option b or option d so the answer is option d is correct are don't say multiple values don't say multiple values because a proposition can never have multiple values this is a proposition proposition is either true or false but not both either true or false but not both this is the definition of proposition yes or no the definition of proposition says it is either true or false but not both so never say that it has multiple value proposition can never have multiple value this can never have a proposition is remember proposition cannot have like true as well as false proposition cannot have like this simple means that we cannot determine okay is this clear simply i can say that we cannot determine the truth value the truth value we cannot determine so remember the answer will be option d not the option b i hope this point is clear understood please tell me is this understood basically this information is given to you in the question in the question this information is given this information is not enough i can say this info is not sufficient to find out truth value of okay so in this question answer will be can't be determined we cannot determine it okay so these are some questions i hope these are enough the remaining questions uh, you can try of course uh, like tomorrow we will see some of them not all of them but some of them we will solve so this question you can try yourself solution you can find on the gate overflow website please try yourself uh, if there is any doubt you can send me the message i will take it tomorrow you can try this question also you can try this question also okay you can try this question also all these questions this question also this 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 okay all the questions you try all of them okay definitely uh, so if anyone has any doubt in any question you just send me a message on the telegram group okay so uh, on our public telegram group you can send me the message you know that on the telegram our public group is there anyone can join this group okay so this is our public group this is a doubt discussion group you can just uh, you can add uh, at the rate uh, uh, this is the gate cse underscore go classes okay so you can join this uh, telegram group okay in this telegram group you can tell me if you want me to take any question of propositional logic so what you do the remaining the remaining questions of propositional logic you try yourself from the gate overflow pdf the solutions solutions are available on the gate overflow website try yourself okay if there is any question for which you want complete analysis 
see sometimes what happens you will be able to solve the question you will get the answer but sometimes you will feel that okay uh, for this question i need complete analysis okay yes or no sometimes it happens you will get the answer but you will you will want uh, or i you will feel that for this question i want variations i want complete analysis if this type of situation happens or if you have any doubt or if there is a question which you are not able to solve which you are not able to understand okay then please send me the message in this group this is our telegram public group in this group you can just tell me that sir, uh, you can send me the link okay for that question you can send me the gate or flow link and you can tell me that sir please take this question i will definitely take that question tomorrow 